Romans chapter 8 is the greatest chapter in the Bible. Why do I call it the greatest chapter of the Bible? Well, for a preacher, the greatest book or verse of the Bible is always the one he is preaching about at the moment. But I still believe Romans chapter 8 is the greatest chapter of the Bible if I preach about it or not, because it shows us what the Christian life is all about. It is full of encouragement and comfort for every believer. Just imagine the doctor tells you that you have only three more hours to live. The pastor is already on his way to you in order to read scripture to you and to pray with you. You can choose between two portions of scripture. First Chronicles chapter 6 in the Old Testament and Romans chapter 8 in the New Testament. What would you choose? I'm sure you choose Romans chapter 8. If I were on a desert island and I could only have one book, it would be the Bible for sure. But if I could have only one book of the Bible, it would be the book of Romans. And if I could have only one chapter of the book of Romans, it would be Romans chapter 8. Somebody compared the Bible with a rink. The book of Romans is like the diamond on the rink. Romans chapter 8 is like the little precious pearl on this diamond. So here we are in the climax of the entire Bible. Romans chapter 8. Today I want to give you seven reasons why I believe Romans chapter 8 is the greatest chapter of the Bible. Reason number one. This chapter is Trinitarian. It presents all three persons of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are all present in this chapter. Reason number two. Romans chapter 8 is gospel-centered. It is about Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus died for our sins. He rose from the dead. And now he is alive, working in the life of every believer through the Holy Spirit. Reason number three. Here in Romans chapter 8, we have the three major doctrines of the Christian life in one chapter. It speaks about justification. It speaks about sanctification. And it speaks about glorification. The Apostle Paul puts his arms around the entirety of our Christian life in Romans chapter 8. Reason number four. As we walk through Romans chapter 8, we see so many teachings which are important for the Christian life. Here we learn about our union with Christ. We learn about liberation in Christ. We study about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in every believer. This chapter teaches us about regeneration, about mortification of sin, about adoption by God and about assurance of salvation. Here we learn that we have a great inheritance in Christ. We receive a foretaste of future glory. We can study about the intercession of the Holy Spirit here and we learn about the providence of God and about the foreknowledge, predestination and calling and security of every believer in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is really a theological treasure chest, so rich, so practical, so encouraging. Reason number five. Romans chapter 8 is the greatest chapter in the Bible because it has a great beginning and a great ending. This chapter begins with no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, verse 1. And it ends with no separation from the love of God, verse 39. Nothing, really nothing could be more positive than this. 
Our Christian life is inframed in these two great declarations, no condemnation and no separation. It is like two bookends. At the beginning, no condemnation. At the end, no separation. And in between, no defeat. Reason number six. Romans chapter eight is the greatest chapter of the Bible because it is about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter seven, Paul has been preoccupied with the place of the law. In Romans chapter eight, his preoccupation is with the work of the Holy Spirit. In chapter seven, Paul mentions the law 31 times, but the Holy Spirit only once. But here now in chapter eight, in the first 27 verses, the Holy Spirit is mentioned 19 times by name. The contrast between chapter 7 and chapter 8 cannot be clearer. Chapter 7 is about the weakness of the law. But chapter 8 is about the power of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit works in the life of every Christian. The Holy Spirit gives life. The Holy Spirit sets us free from the law of sin and death. The Spirit enables us to fulfill the law of God. He changes our nature. He indwells every believer. He raises us to immortality. The Holy Spirit empowers us to resist temptation. He gives us victory for life. He leads the believer. He confirms our adoption. We are sons and daughters of God. The Holy Spirit assures our salvation. He creates in us a longing for eternal glory. He intercedes for us. He helps us to pray. He confirms us to Christ. He brings us to heaven. The Holy Spirit secures our everlasting glory. The whole chapter explains how the Spirit of God brings those who are justified and sanctified to glory. The Christian life is a life in the Spirit. A life that is activated, sustained, directed and enriched by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, Christian life is impossible. No one can live the Christian life in their own strength. The only way that you and I can live the Christian life is by the power of God's Spirit. If you want to learn more about how the Holy Spirit is working in the life of the believer, you must go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is the Holy Spirit chapter. Reason number 7. Romans chapter 8 is the greatest chapter of the Bible because here we have great promises of encouragement and comfort. Verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. My dear friend, do you feel insecure as a Christian? Is your heart doubting? Here is the word for you. If you are in Christ Jesus, you can be sure there is no condemnation for you anymore. Or let's take some more verses. Verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Good news. The Holy Spirit is leading us step by step in our daily life. Or take verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. We are children of God. We can call God our Father. With so much confidence and boldness, we can come as his children into the presence of God. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. 
This is the great Bible verse on salvation assurance. Why do we have so many weak Christians and churches today? Maybe one of the reasons is that we are so seldom in Romans chapter 8. Verse 26. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. This is so encouraging to know that the Spirit of God helps us in our prayer life. So often we don't know how to pray. We know praying can be a struggle, but the Spirit of God knows our deep inward desires, our yearnings, our longings, and he takes them all and he brings them to the throne of God. Next time you pray, remember you are not alone. The Spirit of God is around you and he is in you and he helps you with all your prayers. Verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? The answer is clear. Nobody. With God we are always on the winning side. And then of course the great ending of this chapter. There is no separation from the love of God. And really nothing can separate us from the love of God. Even death is not able to cut our personal relationship with our Lord. In Jesus Christ we are strong, we are firm, we are secure. These are really the heights unequaled elsewhere in the New Testament. Here in Romans chapter 8 we are on the Mount Everest of Scripture. Here we are breathing special air. The air is so clean, so holy, so healthy for our Christian life. Read Romans chapter 8 again and again. Be at home in this chapter and you will be strengthened and you will be blessed again and again in your walk with God. Here we have great promises, great blessings, great assurances, great privileges for God's people. Romans chapter 8 is really the greatest chapter of the Bible. Be rooted, be at home in this chapter, and you will be blessed. God be with you. Amen.